Hello there, so it's Michael here with another guitar lesson from Northern Ireland and we're going to do someone that had a big connection to Belfast back in the day. This is Bad Penny by Rory Gallagher. So I probably only discovered Rory Gallagher like three or four years ago. Just like Gary Moore, what a real great badass guitar player. And he didn't just do one style. I mean, these are two of some of the best guitar players ever and they could just play tons of stuff. You know, so I, I look on and listen and envy if they're playing. So this will be quite a long video, so please check the timestamps and I will make a downloadable tab available in the description box. Just before we get into the main chord progression, the song starts with just some muted strings, okay? So just choke off the strings. And then you're gonna do this strumming pattern. Let me do it with some distortion. So let's look at the chords. We need a D minor. An F and a C and another D minor. Now, however you you play D minor, you might do it that way with the third finger. I've just grown to like doing it that way. Now, the high E string's probably not getting included most of the time, so it's more like the open D string, the G and the B string, and these two strings aren't involved, so it's more like those three. which really makes it a D5, but you know, what, whatever you want to do here, I just hold down the D minor anyway. Then an F. Now, like a lot of people, Rory would have um, played his Fs that way. Like he'd make the F shape, but not bar across with the first finger. He'd put the thumb there. I can't do those Hendrix kind of style ones. My hands are too small. So if you can't do it either, just do a big old F bar chord there. And then a C. And it'll go back to D minor after that. If you're not so much of an advanced player yet, you could just do this. So down, 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 up, and then change chord. and then reset that four chord sequence again. So what's more accurate is we're doing little fills in between some of those chords. And I do urge you to listen to the song to get what I'm talking about here and also look it up, the many live versions on YouTube of him playing it. So for this kind of playing, you might want to use your thumb to mute some of the lower strings, that's up to you, okay? It just depends on how flexible your fingers are and how big your hand is and stuff. But I would usually try and mute out the lower string. And to be honest, that A note doesn't really clash with the D minor chord, so you could put it in. I usually just mute it out though. So down, 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 up on the D minor. Same on the F. When you get to the C, you're only really hitting the lower strings of it with your initial down stroke, so I tend to hit the fifth fourth and third string. And then we do this little hammer on thing. Go to the open D string, pick it. Then pick it again and hammer the two on that string. 
So everything so far? And you can really start to hear it there. And then what you need after that is a D note coming out. So that open D string. And then it's up to you. You could just form the D minor chord again, which is basically what I'll do. So you can either just hit the open D or like hit the fourth, third and second string. Up to you here, okay? So let me put that together from the C. Okay, hopefully that's making sense. Let me put all those parts together before we add one more piece to that. And then there's another strum on the D minor chord. Now the reason I use my pinky there is so that this third finger is going to be free for something. So if you can, keep the shape formed like that. So take that third finger, pick the open fifth string and hammer the three on that string with that third finger. And then you would go back into strumming the D minor chord. And just remember as you go in here, all this downstroke and upstroke and picking this string and that string advice I'm giving you, it's just a guide. This is kind of a looser, more rougher kind of rock and roll. So it doesn't have to be precise all the time. And if you watch his live versions, everything's always a bit different. So just keep that in mind. But that's your first bit. And that's going to take up most of the song in the backgrounds of the leads. Now then, I'm going to demonstrate the intro and the main theme, and then I'm going to put some tabs on screen to show you how that goes. Because they both blend into one, I will then break down the main theme after I've done this for you, okay? So basically the intro is the muted bit at the start and then the main chord progression a couple of times and if you look at the tab you'll just see the main melody the main thing just starts to come in at the end of that intro okay so that's what I'm going to teach you now. So this is basically D minor pentatonic stuff if we were starting the D minor pentatonic here on the fifth fret of the fifth string It's all kind of going to fit in this little box and he's also putting in notes from the D natural minor scale as well, which would be this. So take your third finger, go to the seventh fret of the G string. You're going to pick this note, have your first finger ready at five and do a pull off. And then play seven again with some vibrato. Next string, go to the B string, sixth fret. You're going to pick six and hammer to eight. So everything so far. And then the fun starts. We're going to bend eight that we just hammered to, but you don't actually pick the note again. So everything so far. So pick six, hammer to eight, and then we're going to try and do a full step bend. So that would mean we're turning this eighth fret to sound like the tenth fret. So when you look on the tab and you see eight in the brackets or a parentheses for people outside the UK and Ireland. Um, that means you're holding the note, but you're not actually picking the string again. And I know the big full step bend there is tough, but just do your best. Get those other fingers behind it. Get your thumb over to get some purchase. And then we keep going.
So the note that was bent, you can kind of let it fall back down a bit, but then we have to re-articulate the note. So there's a quick full step bend there again on it. So after you've bent that note up, then you kind of do this quick bend again on it. And then I just pull off to the six again. So your first finger and third finger are doing the work here. Hope that's making sense. And then next bit, you have to then slide back to five. Hopefully starting to hear it there. Then pick six next to it with your middle finger. And then we do this quick trill, which is all over like Rory Gallagher and Gary Mirror music. It has that real Irishy sound. So pick six, do this quick five to six to five trill. So pick five, hammer to six and immediately pull off. And to finish that melody, you then go back to seven on the G string with some vibrato. So all together. Real fun to play. Then we do it again, basically. But you might have noticed I'm starting to dig in to the strings a bit more to get these artificial pinch harmonics. It's all the same stuff again, but you then have to add uh, artificial harmonics to a couple of the notes. So let me just show you. So the second time you hit that eight up there, I mean, what I suggest to do is get over on this pickup or a pickup that's available on your guitar. And then what you're doing, you're picking the note. And after you've picked the note, you kind of turn your thumb to just graze the string that you've hit. And you get that squeal coming out. What I'll do to, to save wasting your time in this video, I will link to a video I did on artificial harmonics, okay? I'll put it in the card up there somewhere and it'll be in the description too. So you do an artificial harmonic here. And then when you get to that little Irishy trill at the end there. And there isn't really one there at the end, but once you kind of get into doing this, you'll want to throw it in there the odd time yourself. Okay, that's the main theme done. And the good thing is that comes up a lot. And there's also another version of it played higher in the fretboard, but it's actually very similar. So we'll get to that shortly. Then a verse comes in and you can do a bunch of things with this. It's basically just the same chord progression again. There are a number of layers of guitars and fills throughout this song, like in the background, kind of interplaying with the vocals, which I'll break down later. But just to give you the basic verse, this is how it goes. And as you can see, it kind of connects into a main theme again, but as I mentioned up higher on the fretboard, just before we get to that, you'll hopefully be able to see, it's just your D minor, your F, your C, and your D minor again. And it doesn't really sound like he's doing the fills from the start of the song, but absolutely you could put it there. And in the live versions, I think he, does do that quite a bit, so you could do this. Stuff like that.
Okay, so next main theme is the same notes, but played in a higher octave, okay? So they're just using all the same notes of the D minor pentatonic and D natural minor scale, just played higher in the fretboard. Now there's a couple of options, but I'm gonna do the one that I put on my tab there. You could do these exact same movements you did in this D minor pentatonic, D natural minor box there, where your reference is basically between fret five and eight, okay? If you can, you can do the exact same thing higher up in the fretboard between fret 17 and 20. But it's kind of a tight squeeze up there. We will be doing like solo stuff up there later, but I actually prefer the notes, how it feels and the tone of it and the position I'm gonna show you. But let me just show you, you can play the same thing in a bunch of places. So hopefully you can see they're the same notes, but it's quite tight up there. So at the end of the verse, you're gonna to go to fret 13 on the B string and give it two full step bends. So that's what we have to do. You're finishing off the verse with your C and then go to fret 13 on the B string and give this two full step bends. Okay, and I, try and do bends mostly with my third finger to get those other guys behind it to help. So two full step bends in 13. Then do another one. And we start the main theme. Then go to 13 on the high E and hammer to 15. And you're gonna see an open brackets again, which you hold and then bend the note, but don't pick the note again. Just like you did down there. But then you have to hit it again with a quick bend and pull off the 13. Then similar moves from before, slide back to 12. And hopefully you're seeing that the same kind of phrasing and your fingers will be happy about this. So slide back to 12 and then you do this little trill from 12 to 13 just with first and second finger. And then the target note we want after that is 15 on the B string and give it some good old vibrato. Let me put all that together. When the tone is quite heavy here, there's a fair bit of distortion on the amp. So what you've got to do is try and mute those lower strings that you're not using with like either side of your palm there, especially when you're doing those big old bends and vibrato and stuff, just to try and keep the noise down okay. So just try and keep an eye on that. Okay, then another verse and another main theme. And they're really similar to what we've done. So I'm just gonna play through the next verse and next main theme here with some tabs to show you how it goes. So let's get to the fills that we could do over this verse. Now it's up to you what kind of sound you want here. I'm gonna switch it to, not the middle pickup, but kind of the middle and neck pickup, just the combination of the two. You could go all the way over if you want, but I'm just gonna choose that one. And then let's look at the first lick. So 
go to 15 on the high E and give it a full step bend. And then after you've bent it, put in a rest note to kill it for a minute. Then play 15 just as normal. Go to 13 and we're going to do this trill from 13 to 15. And then we need 15 on the B string to resolve all that. Next lick is we're bending a G note. Now you can do this in a few places. I'm just going to stick to this area. So 15 of the high E. But you could do this same stuff up there in 20 of the B string. And this is what it is. So three full step bends, but the last one you're going to try and do vibrato on it. Bit tricky. Next one, just in this same area. So full step bend in 15. Let it fall back down. This trill again, so from 13 to 15. and then resolve to that 15 on the B string. So I'm not doing tabs for these wee fills, I'm just listening to it here and trying to work it out by ear. Basically you can do any kind of D minor pentatonic fills here. Um, but these are all cool Lexi's do it and you know, make sure you steal these for your own playing of course. So you could do something like this to finish off, it sounds like something like this. And it would make sense to lend into the next bit straight after that okay so go to eight of your B string that's better full step bend then play six and trill to eight so it's like these ones up here and just finish on that seven on the G string So just check out the last note in the main theme is where we start. So we have to play 15 on the B string again. Then all I do is move the third finger way up to 20. So you're going to bend this. Full step bend, then another one. And after you've done that second one, you then pick 18 on that same string. So then we do this cool kind of double stop thing. Bend 20 again on the B string. And as you're bending that, you're going to grab 20 on the high E string and let them ring into one another. And you get that cool sound. I'm using my third and pinky here. It's kind of hard to use anything else up there. So, so far. So throughout this next part, I kind of just keep those guys planted the whole time. Okay, this is a bit difficult, I know. So try and keep your little finger on 20 the whole time on the high E. And then the third finger is kind of interchanging with some bands and bent note vibrato. So let me just play through it slowly for you so you can pick it up that way, okay? Something like that. I know it's pretty tough up there, just do your best with that. Then the last one in all that group, you're kind of hitting both strings at once and then bending 20 on the B, but keeping 20 on the E static. Which I know is difficult. So let me put everything together.
and then we go into our next phrase so we've got a trill thing now to do so pick 18 hammer to 20 pick 18 and then move back to 17 this is all in the b string then pick 18 pick 17 and do this trill idea again and then down to 17 like that all across the B string then one last thing 17 on the G string I'm just going to use my middle finger up to 15 on the B then uh, this is like a quarter note blues curl on fret 18 okay so we'll call these the trill bits let me put all that together for you Now let me put all that together slowly with some tabs on screen. Then the bridge comes in so you'll need some other kinds of bar chords here. We need a C bar chord. Now you could play like three string power chords, that's P-O-W-E-R. You know, it'll sound just fine that way. Let me just show you how it goes. So on the C. So I do down, down, up, down. But you can do what you like here, but just keep the arm loose so that we're in time, okay? Then we need a G power chord. So that's at the third fret of the low E, five and five on the fifth and fourth strings. Just hit it once. Okay. And then the same again on the C power chord, just with one extra head at the end of the bar. Then might be tricky this one, we need a B flat down there, but you could do a B flat power chord if you wanted. Just give it eight downs. Then next bar, give it four downs. And then we move up to the C bar chord and give that two hits. So I'll put all that together. Then more verses come along and there's more fills over this one okay so I'm not going to play through the chords of it again just keep that in mind that after that first bridge we just did there there's then a bunch of verses to do after that same chords underneath and I'll get to those fills for it so then let's look at some of these lead guitar fills for the next verse that would be starting at about 1 minute 41 seconds so let's check these ones out and I've gone back to the bridge pickup for this. Okay, so that first leg of this part sounds something like this. So it's still in like your D minor pentatonic box. So that's eight on the B string. We're gonna do a full step in and then we're gonna grab the fifth fret of the high E string. Which is kind of a very cool blues lick. and then just grab that note at the end and give it some vibrato. 
Next one, bit of a variation. You know, just steal all these licks. And I'm not even worrying if they're exact, to be honest. You know, I'm just giving you ideas. So bend eight on the B again. And then we're gonna grab eight on the high E and keep those both planted as you do that, okay? I know that's a bit difficult. And then grab eight again and let it fall back down. That's on the B string. Then six. And we're gonna resolve down to this seventh fret of the G string. Next one. Really cool. So go to, that would be 13 of your B string. Give it a full step in. And then put in a rest note after that. And then another one. And the second one, let fall back down. Then grab 10 on your B string. And then you're gonna give a big old full step bend on 13 with some vibrato. And it sounds like there's a bit of a squeal there. So that's what the next one sounds like. And I've gone back to the neck pickup. So um, go to 10 on the high E. And then 12 here. And then a trill. So that was 10 and 12 in the high E. I'm using first and second finger there. Then 13 on the B string. And then you're gonna hit 13 again and do some bent note vibrato. Next one. Fifteen on the high E, two big bends. So full step bends. Then thirteen on the high E. And fifteen on the B string. So the next lick, something like this. So you're on the B string. Pick 13 and hammer to 15. And it's a trill. Then down to 14 in the G string. Up to 13 again. You're gonna slide to 15. And then back to 13 again. Or you could do a bend. And that would have to be a full step bender. And one more to finish it off. Two full step bends on 15 of the high E string. And hit it again with some vibrato. Then after those fills, you've got another bridge coming. It's just the same as the bridge you did before, okay? There's this fill at the end of the second bridge. So that's 7 and 5 on the G string, back to 7, then up to 6 on the B string, and then back to 7 on the G. And then there's like one more fill in the next verse, which I'm just going to give you an idea of how it goes. Similar tricks to before. So we've got this um, double stop kind of thing going. Bend 8 on the B, and then you can grab 8 on the high E. Just it's a lick like that. And then you can do this, bend 8, full step. Pull off the 6. That was also on the B, and then go to 7 on the G, like we've done so many times. And then we're into a big solo.
All right, so we'll do a big rip and solo here. Now, please keep in mind, this kind of thing is really hard to tab out because it's got floating rhythm a lot of the time. And it's sometimes hard to know exactly what was done in the recorded version of this. You can watch a lot of live renditions to kind of see some of the cool stuff Rory Gallagher would have done. So I'll just break it down. And this is pretty close to what the solo is on the recorded version. But of course, you can take liberty with it kind of do your own licks and it's all D minor pentatonic and D natural minor stuff. So here's the bit that like starts at the end of the verse and then the big rip and solo is at about two minutes, 49 seconds. Really cool lick. So go up to 20 on the B string, give these 20s two full step bends. Then go to 18 on that string. And it's quite quick. You're gonna get off that note and go to 19 on the G string and hit that note twice. With some vibrato. Back to 18 on the B and you're gonna hammer from 18 to 20. And do a full step bend on 20. Then another one, but let it fall back down and go down to 18 again. And then the note we've been waiting for. Big bend on 20 there of the high E and we've got to give it some, some vibrato. So let me do everything so far. Gonna get a bit sore up at that end sometimes. So after you've got to this kind of money note bend that we've been waiting for, you can just kind of keep articulating that note, giving it some bend and some vibrato, okay? And that's kind of what's going on in there, okay? Let me just go over that kind of triplet run. So pick 17 on the high E, then come back to 20 on the B. I do use my pinky here, but you could kind of get rid of it. Then back up to 17, back to 20, then 18 on the B. Then we've got this trill that's come up a lot. You're picking 17, hammering and pulling off with uh, your middle finger there on the B string. Then go down to 19 on the G string. Some vibrato, play 17. And then back up to that 19. Let me put everything in context. really fun and dramatic and really expressive this solo but you know do keep in mind what I'm saying I'm not claiming this is a hundred percent and that's not the point really it gives you an idea of how it goes though let's keep going with the solo something like that in there so pick 18 and hammer to 20 on the B string and then bend that note but don't actually pick the note again it's very similar to some of the early earlier parts Then bend it again, pull off the 18, so I'd be using my third and first finger there. And then hit 20 again with some vibrato. And then we've got another kind of trill idea. Pick 18, hammer to 20, immediately pull off and then go back to 17. That's that section there. Then this run here. 18 and 20 on the B string. 17 and 20 on the high E. 17 again. 
20 again and then after this this is all big bends on that uh, 20 of the high E. And you know just go nuts there, do what you can without uh, ripping open your fingers. You know, I don't care how messy that gets there, just dig into it and go nuts there. And then the solo ends by just going back into the main theme, which we already know how to do. So let me take you through the whole solo here, kind of slow, okay? Now the rest of the song would fade out with the same chord progression. And then you can kind of decide what you do there. You can try and listen to it to work out the licks or you can just start improvising yourself with the licks you've already got from the song. Plus if you know your D minor pentatonics and some D natural minor stuff, 